Hello, I would like to show you how to do the uh, relative time sequencing, which tells you exactly what happened when in geologic uh, time in different columns, uh, stratigraphic columns. First, I'm going to show you the rock symbols. Of course, I have to go back and pick a pen right here. So the rock symbols. So I'm going to show you the limestone first. Usually it's really simple. Limestone. Okay, dolomite. Then these are like the stitches are like this. That's dolomite. I'm just saying doll, but it's dolomite. Okay, now let's say conglomerate. When you have conglomerate, you have the big rounded grains, remember? So it's that simple conglomerate. I just put cong. Now the brachia. Here you just have this kind of angular grains. So that's brachia. Uh, the sandstone. Sandstone is really simple. This is just low stuff, you know, the that sandstone. Uh, siltstone uh, so that's silt stone so the mudstone or clay is like this. Uh, igneous rocks, they usually look like this. Or you could have just crosses like granite. So these are igneous rocks. And then when you got metamorphic rocks, they usually are like this. Metamorphic. So now you kind of know the rock symbol. So let's go to the next slide and, and uh, see the real stratigraphic section when we have to tell what layer is the oldest. Actually, here you can see the different um, rock symbols also. But if you look at this and you use the geologic principles, we're gonna see a couple of unconformities here. There is one right here and all around uh, this granite. See, this is an igneous body. So whenever the igneous rock meets any sedimentary rocks, we call it non-conformity. None. So this here is an unconformity, but we call it non-conformity because we don't really know how much time is missing. Here we have the boundary between the igneous and metamorphic, and that's also non-conformity. When you have metamorphic rocks with the sedimentary that's also non so this is non-conformity right here non-conformity i just say none now you have another unconformity right here this here is sedimentary rocks you see shale siltstone sandstone so these are sedimentary rocks so there 
meeting with other sedimentary rocks and these layers are coming up with an angle to the unconformity. This is what we call angular unconformity. Angular unconformity. And then you got, you don't have any more. But if there, if there was an unconformity right here, and it would be parallel above and parallel below, that would be disconformity. Okay, so let's see, what is the oldest layer here? Obviously, the metamorphic rocks. That has to be always the oldest because it has been another type of rocks before. So since it's metamorphic, it was always older than any other rock on this section. So the oldest is the schist. Now, after the schist, what came? It's not the granite because these guys had to be here for the granite to come through. So the next layer is the sandstone, the Y. And after that, the siltstone, because they are just superpositioned, they are on top of each other. So the siltstone, Q. After that, the shale, and it doesn't have any ladders, so I just will use S. So this is going to be S. And then there is this limestone, I will call it L. So the limestone is the last one here. And then we got to this unconformity. And it's an angular one. But look, this igneous uh, intrusion, the granite, came through all these layers. So therefore, it had to be after the limestone. So the granite comes after this. And I will call it G. And then we have this unconformity, which remember is an angular. But if you look at right here, between the granite and this conglomerate, it is a nonconformity. But between this shale and conglomerate, it's angular unconformity. So the next layer after this unconformity is this conglomerate. So I will call it C. And after comes the sandstone, which is an X. And then the last thing is going to be the siltstone, which is a B. So B, the siltstone, is the youngest layer here. The sequencing always, uh, you always have to start with the oldest and then go upwards to the youngest layer, okay? So you always start with the oldest and finish up with the youngest. So that was the first example. Let's see the next one. I show you, I think I will show you too. Here, this is a bit more complicated, but let's see what is the oldest here. If you look at the rock symbols, this one here is a granite. So this is a granite. This is also a granite. So in between them is nonconformity, and this is nonconformity. And right here, that's also nonconformity. Now, can the granite be the oldest? No, because the granite came through all these layers all the way here. So it's younger than this W. But let's see what happened between the W. There is this other granite, but this didn't go through anything here. So this must be the oldest layer right here. So P is the oldest. This is the oldest. After the P comes this unconformity, which is what we call nonconformity. After the nonconformity, the next layer is M, as you can see. After that is L, and then K. And after K, as you can see, this fault line right here. And we know it came after K because it did go through all the layers, all the way up to K, but then it didn't go anywhere else. So, oldest rock is P, M, L, K, and then this fault line, which is A. And then we have this unconformity, and this unconformity, as you can see, these layers coming up to it with an angle. So it's an angular unconformity. After that angular unconformity, you got these layers, R, J, and W. And there is this other unconformity here, as you can see right here. It's a wiggly line, unconformity. And this unconformity actually is not 
angular because the layers below and above are parallel. So we call this disconformity. In this area where you have the intrusion, it's non-conformity. Now, after this unconformity, we got layers B, F, and E. And as you can see, there is another unconformity up here. And these layers are coming up with an angle right here. So this here is another angular unconformity. So this is an angular unconformity. And then you got H, the very last layer, which is the youngest in this case. So I hope this helps you and uh, hopefully you understand better how to do your sequencing. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you.